GERD, also called gastroesophageal reflux disease, is when the acid comes up from the stomach all the way up to the esophagus. This is due to a lower esophageal sphincter that's not closing properly. Normally, it's supposed to close and not let any of the acid up. But some patients have an issue where it doesn't fully close and it lets the acid back up, leading to a burning sensation. The person at risk for this is someone big, so obesity and pregnancy. But it can also be someone with a hiatal hernia. This is when the upper part of the stomach bulges out of the diaphragm, leading to more acid going up the esophagus. Foods can also cause more acid to be built up in the stomach, leading to more GERD. Foods like chocolate, coffee, fatty fried foods, soda, dairy, especially high fat dairy, smoking, alcohol, and peppermint can all cause or trigger GERD. The sign and symptom for GERD is going to be a burning sensation that's going up the esophagus. One of the complications for GERD can be aspiration pneumonia. This is when you aspirate something and it causes pneumonia. That something can be the acid. The GERD can come up and go into the lungs. This is especially true for unconscious patients, like in the ICU setting. Make sure you check breath sounds to see if they've got a pneumonia. The other complication can be esophageal cancer. This happens because of repeated damage to the esophagus. The cells have to keep repairing and dividing, leading to a higher chance of cancer. The main diagnostics for GERD is going to be an endoscopic procedure, so a camera down the throat. Make sure you make the patient NPO and check a gag reflex after before they start eating and drinking. Some of the things that you can do for GERD involves teaching them not to eat at bedtime because this is going to cause the food that they just ate to come back up. You also want to teach them not to lay flat because of the same reason, another way of saying that it's recumbent. You want to elevate the head of the bed so if the food and the acid can stay down. You want to tell them to eat small frequent meals because if they eat big greasy meals, then the acid can come up really easily because there's so much in the stomach. And you want to tell them to avoid the risk factors. So all the foods we mentioned earlier. All right, now the medical interventions that can be done for this patient are identical to peptic ulcer disease. So that involves antacids like calcium carbonate, bismuth subsalicylate, sodium bicarbonate, PPIs or proton pump inhibitors like esmesprazole or pantoprazole, an H2 antagonist like famotidine or cimetidine, also ranitidine. Oh wait, scratch that last one. Ranitidine is no longer used because it causes cancer. If you want a full explanation of all the side effects of these drugs and what they do, watch the video on peptic ulcer disease. All right guys, that's everything you need for GERD.